What's going on guys? It's Harrison and Evan from the Wildlife Brothers and today we're hanging out where we belong under a dock <laughs> here in southern New Jersey exploring one of our favorite habitats, the salt marsh. So Ev, you want to tell them what we're doing out Absolutely. here today? Absolutely. So we're tracking down two species of fiddler crabs. We've been coming to this exact spot for a few years now trying to make this video and finally we're out here with all the right conditions. So let's get out into the salt marsh and see how many fiddler crabs we can find. Big guy, big guy, big guy. Got him. Nice. I was on that too. Alrighty. Oh, there we go. That is our first Atlantic marsh fiddler crab of the day. Excellent. We'll get him into a more controlled environment and start taking a look. So this guy here is the Atlantic marsh fiddler crab, the most common fiddler crab species that we find here in southern New Jersey. Now when you look at this animal, there is absolutely no mistaking it for anything else. And the reason that they call them fiddler crabs is because of that massive claw right there. All adult male fiddler crabs will have a big distended claw like that, and we'll tell you about why they have that crazy adaptation in just a little bit. But for now, what I want to focus on is how common this crab species is. You can find these guys along the Atlantic coast of the United States from around Cape Cod down through Florida, and they will inhabit a lot of coastal habitats, things like salt marshes, tidal mudflats, anywhere where the water will recede and then come back as the tide changes. Now, the leg that has the claw on it is called a chelyped. So with the males like this guy, one of their chelypeds will be incredibly large and the other, as you can see right there, is very, very small. The other legs that don't have claws on them are called periopods, and those are just what they use for locomotion. That's how they get around in the salt marsh environment. This is a very abundant fiddler crab species, and in fact, it only took us about three minutes before we caught this guy, and there are quite literally thousands of them out here on the silt flats. They'll congregate in colonies of a few thousand individuals to over a million crabs in the same area, so they will be absolutely everywhere down here, and as well, you'll notice there are hundreds of thousands of little holes dotting the salt marsh. Those are actually their burrows. So in the event of a predator attack, they will dive down into those burrows and they'll be gone lightning quick. So they can be a little tricky to get a hold of, but Harrison made a great grab a little bit earlier. Now take a look right in between his eye stalks there. You'll see he has that little blue nape that all male Atlantic marsh fiddler crabs have. It's actually a very distinct little feature that allows us to easily identify these guys from other fiddler crab species. And another very unique adaptation we wanted to highlight actually has to do with their claws. So we mentioned that they have those very large and pronounced chelypeds. Now what's interesting is if they were to lose that claw, say a predator were to rip it off for example, it would grow back on the other side of their body. So for example, this guy has his large chelyped on the right. If he were to lose that, it would actually grow back on the left. That is a fascinating ability that all fiddler crabs have that is incredibly unique. Now the fiddler crabs are what we call opportunistic omnivores, which means that they're feeding on both plant and animal material. So for these guys, that will include things like algae, plankton, bacteria, and decaying plant and animal matter like detritus. So these guys will feed on just about anything they can find out in the silt flats. Now what they'll do is they'll use their little chelypeds to pick up little food scraps out of the environment, and they'll spend most of the day foraging. So when we come out here and to the salt marsh, we'll see hundreds of fiddler crabs sitting around in the marsh foraging for all the different food scraps out there in the silt flats. Now, the fiddler crabs have a number of predators because they are so small. These guys will be taken by larger crabs and many different species of birds, things like seagulls and herons and egrets, just about anything would love to take down a little fiddler crab like this because there are so many of them and they make a nice tasty snack for any of the wildlife out here in the marsh. Here we have the Atlantic sand fiddler crab, our second target species for the trip, and these guys are slightly less common than the Atlantic marsh fiddler crab, though they can be found here in the salt marsh in large numbers. Now they inhabit the east coast of the United States from Massachusetts down to the Gulf of Mexico and as far west as Texas. And as their name would suggest, these guys prefer sandier habitats than the Atlantic marsh fiddler crab, though they will venture out into the reeds where both species cohabitate quite well. 
So this is the shop that we've been looking for, guys. We have the Atlantic Marsh Fiddler Crab in my right hand and the Atlantic Sand Fiddler Crab in my left hand. Now these species actually coexist quite well, and you can find hundreds of both species congregating in the same area. And interestingly, though the sand fiddler crab we have here is a little bit smaller, this species grows a tiny bit bigger than the marsh fiddler crab. The sand fiddlers will grow to around 25 millimeters, while like we mentioned earlier, the Atlantic marsh fiddler crabs will grow to around 23 millimeters at a maximum size, and the males are larger in both species. Now one of the easiest ways to tell these two species apart is to look at the colorful napes that are right between the eye stalks. So on the Atlantic Marsh Fiddler Crab, they have a very bright blue nape that we've shown you guys already. And on the Atlantic Sand Fiddler Crab, they have a little bit of purple under there. So that is the easiest way to tell these two species apart. One other thing you'll notice is on the large claw of the Atlantic Sand Fiddler Crab, it is very smooth. They don't have that tooth pattern that the Atlantic Marsh Fiddler Crab does. So that's a very subtle difference, but it is another way to tell these two species apart. So it's really cool to get both species of fiddler crabs in hand at the same time here in the salt marsh. This was definitely our goal for the day. Fiddler crabs are incredibly social animals, and their breeding behavior is among the most fascinating that we've witnessed in any crustacean species. Now what these guys will do is wave their large chelipeds in the air to attract the attention of females. Though sometimes that will garner the unwanted attention of other males in the area, and they will start to compete. So what the males will do is actually grapple each other with those large claws and try and throw each other into the silt. When we actually have some footage of that, and it's quite entertaining to watch. Now when they do breed, the females will lay their eggs down in their underground burrows where they'll be protected from predators. And they'll incubate for about 12 to 15 days before they hatch, and they'll emerge, go through five stages of life until they finally reach adulthood, which for fiddler crabs will last about 12 to 18 months. Now they breed incredibly prolifically and will actually breed about every two weeks from June to September. So we're right in the middle of their breeding season, which is a really exciting time to be out here in the salt marsh filming fiddler their crabs. So we're gonna release the Atlantic Marsh Fiddler Crab now. We released the Atlantic Sand Fiddler Crab just a little bit ago. And off you go, buddy. Fiddler crabs have proved to be pretty tricky subjects to film in the past. We're out here in the marsh, covered in silt, trying to sift through the reeds just to catch one. And contending with a lot Absolutely. of ambient noise out here. So if you guys have heard any of that, we're very sorry. There's not much we can yeah. do. It's pretty crowded here in the marina right now, but this is the perfect habitat to get a hold of some fiddler crabs, and that's why we're here. So if you guys did enjoy this episode, be sure to leave a like on it and comment down below if you ever see fiddler crabs when you're at the beach. And make sure to subscribe to the Wildlife Brothers now because we have so much content coming from down here in New Jersey, back home in Pennsylvania, and many other locations around the map that you will not want to miss. So we will see you guys in the next episode.